don't you dare hold back. Just keep your eyes on me. I said you're ho okay. These are memories of the past. Just, just let them go for a while. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Professor Swan Isaac Bear Bear Shine Clap, and I am also a mayor of Little Bangladesh, and I am the laureate at the Da Vinci Institute. Today, we will be looking at projectile motion. And so, projectile motion is just the motion of projectiles with the things moving in the air. So, to study it in further detail, let me take you to the forest. Alright, teleported back from the forest. It was scary. And, anyway, now... After looking back at the footage and using one Suborno for reference, we found that the rock traveled approximately 39.2 meters, and the maximum height it got was 7.35 meters. And so this is displacement in the Y, this is displacement in the X. This is very approximate, not to scale at all drawn in five seconds would you think but anyway this is the graph for its trajectory now what will we do for this mm. well now i will give you five seconds to do something ready find the velocity of the rock not just vfy or vx find the velocity of the rock all right i give you five seconds five Four, pause the video for more time. Two, one. All right, so it is time to solve this guy. Now, see, it's impossible considering that we only have the distance in the x and the distance in the y, but it is very, very possible, my friend. First, let's say we take two points on its trajectory. One, where it hits the top, its maximum height, and one, just before it hits the ground. And so now, the distance over here is the same as over here. This is the middle point. The time it takes to travel over here is the same time over here. The distance over here is the same distance over here. They have basically everything in similar. They're like twins. And so, now, what we have here is Delta X, 39.2, and Delta Y, 7.35. Now, what we can do is we can set Delta Y equal to VIT or VIYT plus half AT squared. Now, let's say we're only talking about this interval. Um, or even better, I believe they have a highlighter for this. So let's say we're talking about this interval. So now, this interval, at this point, velocity, or velocity initial, whoops, velocity initial, that's equal to, okay, it's equal to zero. And so, at least in the y direction. For x, it's the same as it has always been, because, um, I will shoot air friction to death, and now there is no acceleration in the x direction. And so that means that Vix is the same thing over all over here. And so since Viy is zero, we can set this entire term to zero. And so now what we can do is we get delta y is equal to half a, this becomes g in this case, zt squared. Delta y, we know it is minus 7.35, so it travels downwards by uh, 7.35 meters. And so now, this is equal to half z, well, and then z is um, 9.81, or negative 9.81, Multiply that by t squared. We're not sure exactly what t is. And so we get negative 7.35 is equal to negative 4.905 t squared. 
we divide both sides by negative 4.905, we get t squared is 1.4985, which eventually, when we square root both sides, we end up to about 1.224. All right. And so now, what we can do with this is we know that vf equals to vi plus at. Now, let's change that. Vfy, viy, g. Kind of, kind of feels um, sort of similar to what Coulomb probably did when he was looking at Newton's equation. Still, Coulomb was a sort of plagiarist because even though he didn't plagiarize from Newton, he plagiarized from Cavendish. And so, anyway, we get Vfy, we know Viy VI is zero, then we get 9.81 times the new holy number. And so, this number is T, which is 1.224, and now we get Vfy to be um, about 12. All right, and so now, 12 is also about the population of the town I live in right now. Anyway, um, VIX, now, what can we do with that? H how can we find VFX? Well, it's the same as VIX. <gasps> Since there is no acceleration at all, it stays the same as average velocity. So, you know, let's say that you're taking Vx at all, at all the points. Then, you know, you just get Vx, Vx, Vx over 2. And this is the average velocity Vx at all of the points. And so, and, oh, actually 3, sorry. And so, it all rounds out. The average velocity is all just Vx. It's all Vx. And so now, that means Vfx, since there is no acceleration at all, that means that it's just equal to the average velocity, which is the change in x divided by the time. And so now, voila, we've got the solution. Delta x is uh, 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 39.2 divided by 1.224. With delta x, the change in x, of course, is 39.2. Now we're talking about the entire journey. And then you divide that by the time. And so the time for the entire journey is two times the, what we already have, because this is only for half the journey, or this red interval, remember. And so now that gives us 39.2 over 2.448, which is twice 1.224. And so now that gives us 16.0111. Funny sequence. And if you continue it, it gives you 097, which is another one. Yay. All right. So now that we have this, and we have the, now that we have VFX and we have VFY, now we can make a sort of triangle in order to add them uh, to the sum. We take the vector vfx over here. So this is the head of vfx. And then we draw the tail of vfy. And so we add these vectors, sort of similar to the Pythagorean theorem. And so this is the square root of vfx squared plus v of y squared. And so now, this gives us um, vfx, we know, is 16, approximately, anyway. And then we add that to 12. And we get the square root of 256 plus 144. So that's uh, 400, which gives us 20 meters per second. Again, this is only approximate. In reality, it's actually 20.01. And in reality, reality, the distances we measured aren't exactly accurate. So, it becomes even more precise. <gasps> anyway, now, it's time to find the angle it was shot at. Now, from a distance, it may look weird, but that's because I'm bad at drawing diagrams. But, 
what we could do is pretend this is a triangle. And now, let's say we take data over here, which is obviously how it's going to be launched. And so, data over here, how do we find data? Well, we find data um, by using so, ka, or ta. So, so, we have opposite, which is VFY. So, sine theta is opposite, which is VFY, which we know is equal to 12. And you divide that by the hypotenuse, which is 20, as we have seen over here. 12 over 20. And so, now, this equates to 3 fifths. So sine theta is 3 fifths, which is 0.6. Now, you take sine inverse of both sides. And so, 0.6. Now we get theta is equal to 36.87 degrees. And so, now, we have found theta. We have found VFY. We have found VFX. Whoopsies. We have found V in total. We have found everything that you could possibly need to. Oh, yeah. And we found the time. And probably the only nine year old mayor who's doing fitting. Yeah. Brought to you by Brilliant.org. Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science.